cover some music on the channel that's more accessible for intermediate pianists and students than the heavy stuff. And among Beethoven's 32 piano sonatas, there are actually two in Opus 49 that's very short and quite simple to play. They're probably written with a pedagogical purpose in mind and much earlier than the opus number would suggest. So they're from 1795 to 96, which is around the same time that he composed the piano sonatas in Opus 2 and Opus 10, so quite early. But they just weren't published until 10 years later when Beethoven's brother found the manuscript and took it to the publisher. And you can really feel this earlier, more of a classical style in the music. It's more about a balance of characters than the heavy and dramatic Beethoven that we know who comes a bit later. So if you're maybe looking at the Mozart Sonata Facile in C major, the K545, and finding that quite hard, because it is, then this piece could be a great alternative or a stepping stone to get some good exposure of the classical style which is actually an important foundation for playing all piano music. Now, there's actually no dynamic markings in the original score in this one, so we have a lot of freedom to find our own interpretation, and I will give my thoughts on the music as I play, but you can hear a lot of various ideas, and they're all allowed in this case. And in this classical style, it's important to know your way around sonata form, because that's the name of the game. So I will point out the different sections when we get to them. So we start with the main theme, I think a healthy forte for the chord. And a little bit softer for the melody that follows in the legato. A nice counterpoint, just two voices with the hands going and outlining the chords D, G, back to G. That's four bars of the main theme, repeated one octave higher. Now a little bit more busy in the left hand accompaniment, and it works a bit differently when you're higher up in the register to have more notes in a softer way. And now a continuation. Almost a bit sentimental, very light. Coming down again with the scale. And here something happens, just turning this uh, A minor, first inversion, to A major, first inversion. So the A pointing to D. we get this contrast of characters, I call this like a closing material, because we're already done with the main theme, we're wrapping it up and we get this engine of triplets, uh, so again a bit louder here, and just a nice contour between D and G. So it's just D7 and G and it ends on D, so that's called a half cadence, when you end on the dominant uh, as a proper close. And now we're ready for the second subject, the secondary theme. So it's again a new character, more legato, more sensible in a way. It's actually close to the main theme in the melodic contour. This turning and the second theme. But it's more legato and it's also presented in the dominant, in D major. So directly shifting to D major. So as soon as you see these C sharps, they're indications of uh, something, a chromatic move. So it's not in G major anymore, it's in D major, because the C sharp is the leading note to D. And this is always the case with the secondary theme in sonata form, in the classic versions. And we get it one more time after this. And 
and then it takes a new direction and now we get these scales and this is really a great piece to you get to practice scales within a proper musical setting they always have melodic value these scales so this is this part is kind of the real closing group of the whole exposition which is the first big section of the sonata and i call this like a transitory passage we're going somewhere we don't really know yet and it's a little bit more uh, diluted <laughs> not as intense just one harmony per bar and you get to enjoy this it's a type of again a new contrast and this is a7 so now we're, we're uh, still in D major I think this bar when you get to repeat this quarter note uh, I have pedal here and I think it's a brilliant uh, place to because it sounds so well with the pedal. You can play it, the jumpy interpretation if you want. Like normally I'm quite careful with the pedaling to not uh, blend too much because uh, it needs to be crisp and clear. But these bars get a really nice resonance with, if you have the pedal. So this is a new tone new note, uh, the C natural, turning the D into D7, pointing to back to G. But immediately back to D, so it's just a quick turnaround. So we get the A in the bass. So let's go for another round, it's like four, four times of scales. And now we get the final closing material. So it's the same closing material that we used for closing the main section. Now we're closing the, the exposition after the second uh, theme. So it's slightly different chords. Uh, we turn around instead of going down. And we're in D major still and A7 with D as a pedal point keep the D, get it grounded. Um, and end with a big chord. So this is an exposition, it's repeated the normal way. I don't think you have to always play a repetition in this way because it's uh, anyways a lot of repetition in the music. But uh, yeah, why not if you want a longer piece. We move on now to the development, starts here. It's a short development and that's a place where you take ideas from the exposition and the, the subjects and the themes and you kind of try them out in new ways. So we get the main theme starting in minor. D minor. And immediately we get it again after only three bars. So it's kind of interrupted with a new entry. Now it's A minor, so we're starting to form a sequence. So it's much more in minor, a different uh, color here, a bit more uncertain and uh, yeah, the normal minor stuff, nothing <laughs> complicated really. This is a nice chord. You know what this is? It's an augmented sixth chord. So we're going to B, a B major chord, but it's clear that it's a dominant to E minor. We're just going to be stuck on the dominant for a while. And this chord before that, it's one of those chromatic extra chords that you put in before the dominant. That's called an augmented sixth chord. And it's a German augmented sixth chord, the version. A French version would be... And the German version is just a small subtle differences. There, there's an Italian version, a bit more sparse as well. Uh, so it's nice to know about that. Uh, slightly more advanced theory, why exactly how it works with the chromatic notes. But anyways. So we get stuck on this really nice repeated note. Just kind of limbo, where is it going? Just B and E minor. And uh, 
something new with a melodic content. Uh, I like to do this short, the quarter notes. And then legato there. I don't know, that's just my personal preference. You, you hear a lot of, you can hear that as well. This is the best part of the sonata, I think, because now we get these nice legato lines in the left hand. Because we're finally leaving the B, the repeated staccato character. And now here's more harmony happening. That's why it, it feels like it's lifting. And it's just going through a circle of fifth, no surprise. B as a dominant pointing to E minor. Moving on, so E minor to A minor. D to G. So we're E minor and A minor and then D7 and G. So that these are diatonic chords uh, within G major. So we're finding the way back, but the E minor where we start uh, feels like the a tonic in the starting point because we've been on B. So it's going from that place, the minor place, all the way to G major, and we get this really nice sense of arrival. And it's been up in the high register and coming down, you get the fullness of the register down here. So let's play it again. So this is the recapitulation. We get the main theme repeated. It's exactly the same to start with. Until here, here we take a new turn because we need to move to different tonal areas in sonata form. That's the game plan. So it needs to be something different. So here we go from G to C, making it G7 to C. So it makes the G to a dominant, secondary dominant to C, the fourth scale degree. So now C major, now we get the scale and in the exposition these scales came off to the second subject. So it's material we recognize but it's actually in a new place in the recapitulation. It's a nice little detail. Every instance of a sonata and sonata form is individual in some way and this is how Beethoven does it in this work. Put it in this here. But it grows back into the closing material with the triplets. So it's the triplets in the scale as well but we go from here. <laughs> So this is again material we recognize and now it's in the right place because this is also closing the main theme in the exposition. And it's even in the same uh, harmonic position. We're ending on D, but this is now comes another, the second big shift in the exposition. It was again a bit of a red herring that he went to this C area as second idea to put in the recapitulation of a new thing but now we're back on track and in the exposition we got the second subject in D major after exactly this we got but now in the recapitulation we get the same secondary subject but it's in G major and you can feel these two different feelings that comes from the path of tonal areas that we choose. So this is, uh, this is true for every sonata form uh, if in the classical style. Of course there are exceptions, but generally you get the second subject in the recapitulation is always in the tonic because that's you've been on the journey and then you're coming back and you're reaffirming the tonic as the home key, G major. So that's why we get the second subject feels a, more like home. Uh, 
And now when we get the repeat of it, it is a variation to get an octave higher. And it's possible because the different harmonic position is lower to start with and then it's higher as a second time variation. It's another favorite place is when you get this nice high register. Now we get the scales again and this is where they're supposed to be and now but now they're in G major instead of D. get all the way here and now we get the closing material again and again it's following the the map that we know so no surprises here well I think it's an extra time actually to just reaffirm that we're approaching the end we get the pedal point which is G now so yeah just one extra time And just a simple cadence to end with D7, G, and of course big chords for them as well. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching Sonata Secrets, and the Patreon shoutout goes to C and N Kilham and Filnius.